But now let's move on to the big, big event of the morning. We are minutes away from that uh, big IPO listing of Hyundai India. Uh, if we look at the pre-IPO session, the stock is about a percent or so lower. 1960 was the issue price. And of course, the street has been abuzz with the fact that this is probably going to be a tepid listing. The retail portion was not fully subscribed. Ashwin Patel, Equity Research Analyst at LKP Securities, joins in to talk about not just today's view. Obviously, we're looking at a you know, medium to long term view. This is a very large enterprise that's looking to list in India. Ashwin, so the, the concerns have been well documented, right? It's an OFS. The Koreans are selling 17 percent equity, taking the money out. But what's your view? I mean, does this at all make sense for someone who's looking to add to auto positions uh, from a medium term basis to the portfolio? See, I think that, uh, you know, Hyundai is a second best option after Maruti. Uh, because, uh, you know, it's a pure play and has been in the industry since more than two and a half decades. Uh, so they know the intricacies and, you know, all the nuances of the auto passenger vehicle industry in India. They're the number two player. They have got a market share close to about 15%. And the market decline has not been that uh, stark as compared to Maruti also. You know, and uh, they have got strong numbers. Their margins are close to about, uh, you know, in Q1, they reported 30.8% kind of margins as against Maruti is 12.2%. So, uh, and, uh, you know, their, their product mix is also very strong as in 68% uh, of their uh, volumes come from the SUV segment, while for Maruti, it's about, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's quite less as compared to them. But uh, the small car segment, which is decelerating, uh, that is, uh, you know, for Maruti, it's at about 39-40%, and for Hyundai, it's just at about 12 watt percent. So, you sure. know, and 68%, uh, as I said, come from SUV segment, and 20% come from exports. So, uh, you know, they have, they have got a very rich product mix. And they have got a very, uh, you know, good, uh, uh, what you call, uh, product line, uh, pipeline uh, coming up with four new models coming in the next one or two years. And uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Creta EV is one that everybody is waiting for. And uh, they have got a good product mix in form of CNG. Uh, they, are, they are coming up with a good CNG uh, product pipeline as well, ICE, as well as EVs. So I think, uh, you know, they have got very good return ratios as well. So it's a good bet uh, to be into from a medium term to long term perspective, I guess. Okay, I think we've got the uh, Hyundai management pictures. Now we'll stay with the pictures uh, because uh, the bell ringing ceremony anytime now. Uh, and let's have the price on one side uh, because I think we should, uh, we should be able to view with this as the largest ever IPO in India. Uh, makes it to the market. There you go. Uh, that's essentially, so you got the car, you got the people, you got the price, <laughs> and you got the logo, uh, all in one frame. Uh, and uh, you got the first one, first uh, the uh, gong of the bell coming, going off anytime uh, and in the next couple of seconds. So it's going to be, at least at start, as was expected, at a slight, uh, I mean, it's going to be flattish, right? I mean, 1900 uh, odd is where uh, the indication is the stock is going to come to the market. Uh, and it's about 29, 26 rupees lower than what they sold stock at in the IPO. Uh, and look at the volumes already on the NSC. 4 million shares and, uh, of course, on the BSC as well. That's a Creta, and, uh, right? There's a Creta rotating I, around there. I, I think, think so. <laughs> I think that is the Creta. I think that is the Creta. And if you remember, they told us that there will be the Creta EV, uh, yeah. which is going to come to the market pretty soon. By the, I think they said by the end of the year, uh, by December, that should uh, hit the market as well. So you've got the NSE boss and you've got the, uh, the Hyundai boss and of course the contingent from uh, uh, Korea which is here and I think you've got the price starting to trade. So yeah, it's ticked up into the green, it's slightly uh, higher and it's flat, I mean, absolutely flat, about uh, a quarter higher, a third lower. Uh, the list, it's made it to the market at 19.34 and uh, the issue price was 19.60. Uh, so that's essentially what you have. Uh, on uh, the uh, Hyundai IPO as it uh, starts to trade. 1% uh, down now, 1938 or so. It's a big moment. I mean, you know, it's the issue price, uh, the opening price is the opening price, and we'll sort of continue to talk about that. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's, a brand, it's a car brand which uh, most Indians are familiar with. Uh, for so many, it perhaps is, has been their first car uh, as they moved on. And of course, maybe a graduated to higher, level, higher models of Hyundai. And uh, they are now part of the listed universe here in India. Big one, and it's gotten done. Oh, absolutely. And I remember, I think, the brand itself, it'll, uh, it'll be part of, uh, you know, uh, public memory and uh, private memory for so many Indians out there, right? Uh, the revolution that they caused with their Santro and then Santro Singh. And the story goes on. The question is, really, 
Uh, what from here? The listing mm. has happened. It's it's 11 rupees lower. Let's bring in Prakash Diman into the conversation as well. Prakash, before you joined in, you know, Ashwin was just telling us it's all about the new launches, right? And that's my real question to you. Uh, yes, they're doing much better than Maruti in the SUV space. But the question yeah. is, going forward, can they keep taking on the onslaught from, let's say, a Kia, which is a sister company? Can they keep taking on the onslaught from Mahindra and Mahindra? Can they really go out there and get market share on SUVs? And then the whole EV battle as it's building up. If you were to buy Hyundai Motor right now, if anyone were to buy it, that would be based on what kind of market share and sales projections? Good morning, Sabi. So I think uh, it's, it's very clear this is a business that you would have to look at from a very long-term perspective. I mean, even when you talk about the history, uh, you're talking about flashes of salience that have happened over the last many years, uh, and you would expect that to continue over the next few years. Now, whether you want to pay a price uh, as steep as this, uh, that's a big question. But what about businesses that they expand or launches that they have? My sense is there's enough supply uh, of newer models from everybody out here whether it's Tata Motors, whether it's a new renewed interest with Mahindra, it's Maruti making a comeback. So it's going to be a very competitive market like any other market globally. So you will you will have to, you know, re realistically anticipate that Hyundai would also find it quite challenging to continue growing at the same pace that they've grown in the past. So my sense is it's going to be an average player. Uh, there's nothing exceptional about their launches that will make them number one or you know market share wise leadership positions in beyond certain segments or sub segments. So yeah, I mean it's it's a good auto play uh, to have on the bourses. But you look at look at the supply of uh, stock that's available. I mean you will you will always find it extremely difficult. Their idea was an OFN. They never needed the money to grow the business in that sense, so, and they've done that. So whether as an investor it serves my purpose is the question, and the answer is probably not. So I, I, I'm not too excited about buying into your deck. You can buy the cars, maybe not the stock. Mm. Uh, Ashwin, so so let's uh, drop the contrast, right? If you want to own passenger vehicle stocks in India, you've got Maruti, you've got m and you've got Tata Motors, and now you have a Hyundai. I'm talking about top-of-the-line names here. What would your pecking order be? Uh, my pecking order would be m and at the top. Because they have got a superior portfolio on the SUV side, their farm equipment segment is also, I guess, going to do good considering, uh, you know, good monsoons. Uh, so uh, at the top would be M&M. Then uh, maybe like Tata Motors would be there uh, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, everybody is aware, you know, they are getting a good kicker from JLS. And of course, I mean, that's a, they have they have got multiple levers as such. In passenger vehicles also, they are doing good. In commercial vehicles, I think, uh, you know, there'll be green shoots available. Uh, you know, we can see them uh, uh, by the end of FI25 or maybe like in FI26 first order quarter. So Tata Motors should perform well from, uh, you know, uh, maybe like uh, two to three down the, uh, months down the line, they should start showing good performance again. And third, I would be, uh, you know, going on for uh, Hyundai and then uh, Maruti because uh, because of the uh, points that I said earlier, like superior uh, uh, product uh, mix, then uh, good launches coming up, uh, then uh, higher, uh, you know, contribution, as I said, uh, from the SUVs that, is, that goes under product mix again. Uh, and uh, strong ratios and the market share is also not falling to a great extent. They may, they may pick up market share, who knows, uh, with the Creta EV coming up. So I think third would be Hyundai and then I would go for Maruti uh, in that order. Mm. Uh, okay, you know, on, on the subject of valuation, Prakash, come in on this, I'm going back to a comment. I, I remember starkly, we had Mayuresh Joshi of Willem O'Neill uh, in the studios a couple of days back and he said, look, because the Hyundai management themselves said, you know, it was a conversation with them and they said that if you take out the post-COVID pop, that whole sort of, you know, revenge buying pent-up demand, then the steady yeah. state growth rate has been about 5% for the industry, for the car industry here in India. So maybe, you know, that's not too bad. That was their argument. But then I go back to what Mayuresh said, and I think it was a very big point that he raised, that in an economy that's growing at 7%, do you want to be buying a business growing at 5%? So just come in on this, and then on the valuations as well. Uh, at what price uh, would, would this look good at all? And then, you know, how would you look at taking exposure to um, uh, four-wheelers, if at all you will? Yeah. No, I think that's, that's a very valid question. <clears throat> and as investors... We need to focus on uh, what's the return uh, on the business rather than, you know, 
how the cars even, uh, you know, the products stack up in terms of market share and all. So very interesting, uh, this thing that the penetration uh, rate in India as compared to China. So we still have about eight cars per hundred. China is probably at about uh, 27. The U.S. is at about 60. So, you know, you have all those metrics which tell you that there's a very strong headroom for growth for this market. But at what price? And the taxation structure in India is such uh, so be that even if you and I keep buying cars every five years, uh, it's not necessary that the company will make money. You know, the kind of the cost of production, the taxation structure, the distribution costs, all of that, the, the upkeep costs, you know, there is so much of load on that. Uh, all of these are fairly loaded in that sense. So it's not a very high margin business anymore. So, uh, you know, that's exactly why the premium car segment is growing faster because you still have some leeway there. You have double digit margins coming in, the own, you know, the kind of uh, maintenance money that the uh, ONM money that the landmark tends to make and things like that. My sense is uh, Hyundai is valued uh, richly in terms of, you know, whatever growth rate that they can do, irrespective of how, you know, uh, the market share happens, the market size itself is not going to let them grow too fast. And 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 margins are going to be, always going to be having a lid on uh, in, in terms of, you know, what they can do. So 5%, 7%, 8% growth is at best you could. Uh, and that's exactly why the value shares globally are so low. Globally, P multiples are still single digits or probably just you know about 11 12 uh and here you are paying 20 22 times so that that itself tells you that there is a shortage of supply of good paper and that's why there's demand uh and okay. and the institutional approach tells you exactly that so valuations yeah. are a bit spread uh i don't think there's much of headroom for for the p expansion yeah. to happen no i know and then there's a question of supply overhang as well right the promoters are sold about 17 and a half percent they'll have to sell more in the market to meet regulatory norms in the next coming few years gentlemen thank you very much for joining in, sharing some lights. We just want to wrap this discussion by perhaps we can throw those graphics up. There are some foreign brokers, by the way, who've come up with uh, pretty strong targets on uh, Hyundai Motor India. Nomura has initiated coverage with a buy. Their target is 2,472. They're optimistic on the product mix and sort of the volume trajectory going forward. And Macquarie uh, also has an outperform rating. They've just started coverage, 2,235. Some of these foreign brokers are keeping a more optimistic view on Hyundai Motor India. <laughs>